Welcome to the Legally Speaking Podcast. You are now listening to season six of the show. I'm your host, Rob Hanna. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by Joshua Schrodron. Joshua studied at the University of Michigan before his JD at Emory University School of Law. He was the founder and CEO of Betterfly, the largest online marketplace. Josh spent two years as managing partner at Summon Litigation Ventures and is now the proud founder and CEO of Mighty. Mighty is a personal industry firm revolutionizing the support for clients focusing on legal, finance, medical, and mental health. So a very, very warm welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for having me, Rob. Uh, It's an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And before we dive into all your amazing projects, achievements, and experiences to date, We do have a customary icebreaker question here on the Legally Speaking podcast, which is on the scale of one to 10, 10 being very real, what would you rate the hit TV series Suits in terms of its reality of the law? I would say three. (laughs) Okay. And why are you giving it three? Because a little birdie tells me you have seen the show. So I'm a a big fan of a different show. I, I love Suits. I used to watch it religiously. But I'm a really big fan of a show in the United States called The West Wing, which chronicled the the U.S. president. And I was always uh, infatuated with that show and in large part wanted to go into politics inspired by that show. And one of the things that I now understand as I am older and wiser, the United States politics, and I think most politics around the world, is more like the show Veep than it is like the show West Wing which is that most people are not competent. And so I think the same thing applies in suits, which is you have all of these incredibly smart, incredibly competent people who are just, they're just killers. They know exactly what they're doing and they get the job done. And uh, I just am highly skeptical that many of those people exist in the world. And uh, I've seen firsthand that people you'd expect to just be the Harvey Specters are, are far from that. I think you have more than justified your three. And with that, we're going to move swiftly on. You touched on it a little bit there, but let's start with Josh, your your background. Tell us a bit about your background and your career journey. Yeah. So I went to law school right out of college in, in the US. And I knew from the early years of law school, when my friends were talking about going to the big firm, that that probably wasn't the right path for me. And so during my two summers in law school, I uh, interned uh, one summer uh, on a political campaign and another summer I worked at Goldman Sachs. So it was very off the beaten path, even in law school uh, amongst my law school classmates. And I had a really informative first job out of law school. I worked for a hedge fund that one of the primary strategies, and this is 20 years ago, was financing personal injury law firms. And at the time, litigation finance as a term didn't exist, but the practice very much existed. And it really interested me because I had a law degree. I had a business background and business degree um, also at that time. But I had never conceptualized the idea that a lawsuit is essentially an asset. And as an asset, it can be traded, it can be given away, and it can be financed. And so the idea that we could go and finance personal injury law firm was awesome and it was really informative. But there was something else that really struck me too, which is that these law firms would go out and they would tell their clients or their prospective clients, you can't afford my services. So instead of paying me cash up front, you have to give me interest in your case, a contingency fee, because I can afford to hold these fees, but you as an individual consumer can't. But the truth is that they actually can't afford it either. They have to pay rent. They have to pay their staff. They have to pay for advertising. And they also can't wait wait for these cases to settle. And so what they did was they came to a firm like I worked for at the time, and they needed to seek financing as well. And so what occurred to me then, uh, and this has really stuck with me, is it's not that these law firms were better positioned to hold these interesting cases. It's that they had the ability to get financing where consumers didn't. And That insight actually led me, sorry to make this long-winded, but that insight actually led me 10 years later, so about 10 years ago, to start my own financing company where we we would empower the consumers just like 10 years before I had empowered the actual personal injury firm. And 
it was that experience of working with consumers firsthand on personal injury cases that exposed me to the big problem we're solving today is, which is that consumers who get injured in personal injury cases uh, rarely are able to get back to their pre-accident state. They rarely get the justice that the civil justice system promises them. And there's so many reasons that that's the case, but one big one, probably the biggest one that we found is that the personal injury lawyers that they hire to help them uh, have the wrong incentives. Yeah, and thank you for giving such a, a good overview of that. That kind of dovetails nicely to where you sit today about your background and then it sort of showcases some of your entrepreneurial thinking. And then to sort of, you know, one of the key words you mentioned there as well is around around justice. But I also mentioned, so today you sit as the founder, CEO of Mighty. So can you explain what Mighty is for those who may not know? Yeah, so Mighty is a service and technology company that has a mission to help people injured after accidents get justice. And we've had a lot of different products and services over the years to attempt to do that. But two months ago, we announced a consumer product where we would partner with a law firm called Mighty Law, which is a law firm that is independently owned and managed. So there's no common ownership between Mighty Law and Mighty. But we would partner with Mighty Law to give people after an accident a far superior and differentiated experience than what they get today by calling the number on the billboard or the TV commercial um, and and getting a traditional personal injury lawyer. And so for all intents and purposes, we are reimagining the personal injury experience and system in order to deliver better outcomes for people injured after an accident. And I love that because that's so important. And I think it's so key that you are creating this because it's going to help people's lives and it's trans- transformational what you're doing so congratulations but i know it's never easy and also you need to acquire experiences and knowledge along the way and so you did spend two years at some litigation ventures assisting plaintiffs in their finances whilst waiting for their legal outcomes so what did you learn whilst at that particular point and how did that really help contribute to building mighty So I think the big thing I learned, which unfortunately I forgot for five years, but luckily have remembered more recently, is that the lawyer plays an integral role in the services and outcomes that the client gets. And one of the things I saw firsthand when I had a finance firm uh, is that the lawyer does not always act in the best interest of the client. Because often their incentives, the personal injury lawyer's incentives, are misaligned with the incentives of their with the incentives of their clients. And one of the ways I saw this when I had a financing company is that the lawyer would advise their client to take a more expensive financing deal with a company where they knew the owners rather than a less expensive financing deal with somebody else. And that to me was astounding. Uh, how could this happen? How can it's, it's, it's math, right? It's one, one is this, one is that, one's more expensive, one's less expensive. It should be a commodity. You should, but in fact, it's not. And I saw firsthand that the lawyer has a lot of power and the client often listens to what the lawyer has to say. And so in order to really affect change, you can't wait until after the lawyer gets involved. You have to be involved with the lawyer from an early perspective. And that's what we've created at Mighty with our relationship with Mighty and Mighty Law. Um, and, and we're super excited about it. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's a clear synergy I see there as well and, and how, that, how that comes together. And I just love that, again, it all comes to the right place of justice, helping people that get the right help when they need it. So I want to know a little bit more, just for our audience to understand, explain how personal injury services work in the US and what steps do you have to take perhaps when looking to make a claim? So in the traditional system, in the United States, personal injury is dominated by billboards, uh, TV commercials, and other kind of seedy forms of media, if you, if, you, if you don't mind me saying that. And that's on the advertising front. On the service front, 
most personal injury lawyers charge the exact same thing as one another. They offer the exact same level of service uh, and they offer the exact same level or lack of transparency. So for example, most personal injury law firms, the vast majority, like 99%, if I had to guess, don't list their prices on their website as, as an example of this phenomenon. And so what you're dealing with in the United States is personal injury lawyers who uh, only differentiate in their messaging and their billboards and how loud that they, they speak. And when somebody signs up with a personal injury lawyer, they typically give away 33 to 40% of their case to that lawyer. And that lawyer not only helps them get a legal settlement, but often they are uh, asked to help the client do things that don't relate to the legal settlement. Clients, for example, need help with property damage claims in order to get their car fixed. Clients might need mental health support. And law firms only focus and do one thing. And they're only incentivized to do one thing, which is help with the legal settlement. And, and I think that's very much how uh, one-minded personal injury firms are today in that they basically just try and maximize the settlement uh, for, for which they get a percentage of the growth. Yeah. And let's build on that then, because it's a really important point. But also, again, it comes to sort of Mighty and how you're doing things differently, because a client, my understanding with Mighty, would go through five stages, screening, investigation, treatment, negotiation, unsettlement, offer and resolution. So can you explain a little bit more about each of these particular stages? Yeah. So I think I think what's important, actually, before we even talk about that, if it's OK, is talking about Mighty Law and code of conduct that every mighty law lawyer agrees to. And I think it's important to talk about this because I think it's a, almost a, a precursor to, to your question. So what personal injury law firms today do is they act in their own best interest, which is not a new phenomenon. I think that's generally uh, how people act. There's a very famous Charlie Munger quote, which is a, who's a, a partner and protege of Warren Buffett, who said, show me the incentive and I will show you the action. And lawyers are incentivized by a certain set of incentives that pits them actually against their client. All mighty law lawyers agree to a code of conduct, which is 13 codes, which actually realign those incentives to make sure that they are in the best interest of the client. And so one bad practice in personal injury today is billboard lawyers have an incentive to refer their clients to medical providers who overtreat. And the reason is, the more treatment a client gets, the higher their settlement. And the higher the settlement, the higher the lawyer's fee. At Mighty, we actually have the, the Mighty Law Code of Conduct requires the lawyers at Mighty Law contractually on the, in the retainer agreement with the client to refund uh, 10% of the medical costs that their clients incur as part of the case out of their fee for medical procedures on lien and letter of protection and that aligns the incentives because now the lawyer is saying, if the person gets more treatment than they should or than they need, I actually have to come out of my own pocket, out of my fee in order to reimburse them. And so the most important thing that a law firm can do is realign its incentives before the client even comes in the door. After that, everything else is, is largely gravy because now the, the lawyer and the client's incentives are aligned and the client knows that the lawyer has their interests, their best interests at heart. Time for a short break from the show. Are you looking for a way to get your firm working more efficiently and profitably while ensuring a better work-life balance for your team? Well, if you haven't considered our sponsor Clio, I'm here to strongly recommend that you do. I absolutely love working with Clio. Not only is it the world's leading legal practice management and legal client relationship management software, it also has a really solid core mission to transform the legal experience for all. Something I personally support. What sets Clio apart for me, it's their dedication to customer success and support. There are lots of legal softwares out there, but I know from talking to Clio users that their support offering is miles ahead of the rest with their 24-5 availability via email, in-app chat, and over the phone. Yes, you can actually call in and speak to someone. Clio is also the G2 crowd leader in legal practice management in comparison to 130 legal practice management softwares and has been for the last 14 consecutive quarters. 
G2 Crowd is the world's leading business solutions review website. You can check Clio's full list of features and pricing at www.clio.com forward slash legally dash speaking. That's www.clio.com forward slash legally dash speaking. Now back to the show. I love that. And it's all about culture and values, isn't it? And understanding, you know, how that needs to be so put into the mind of the people receiving those services. So it's great that you kind of went to that level and have all of those in place. And, you know, typical, that's why obviously Mighty is such a success. So I guess sticking with Mighty, then, you know, you have the honor to help people when they need help at their absolute most. So what type of personal injury claims do you typically deal with? Or is it a complete spectrum, broad stretch? Yeah, I I think this is really the most amazing part of my job. And I think everyone who works at Mighty feels very similarly, which is we are helping the vulnerable when they're most vulnerable. A lot of the vast majority of people that we work with and that are affected by personal injuries are from marginalized or underserved communities. There's a often cited statistic in the United States that 64% of Americans can't come up with more than $1,000 in the case of an emergency. And by definition, this is the emergency that they're talking about. And so we have this, in the personal injury community, we have this special duty to help people when they're, when, they're most, when they're most vulnerable. And that's amazing. Now, juxtapose that with the reputation of personal injury, which is really seen as CD. Individual claimants are often seen as frivolous and money-grubbing. The lawyers are seen as ambulance chasers. And one of the things that I think is really important for us to accomplish is not only for us to fight against the bad behaviors of billboard lawyers, but also to reframe the importance of personal injury as a just a really important part of society, similar to the United States legal aid, which is often seen as very positive. And so it's a real honor to be able to work with these people. And it gives us a, a, a sense of purpose and responsibility that I think most companies don't have just again because of the demographic uh, and situation that these people are, are in. And I, I can just hear the passion in your voice, you know, com- coming out there in terms of, you know, you really do want to make a change where people are at their most vulnerable and, and be there and support. And I think that's that's so important and it's, it, it's lovely to hear. Let's talk more broadly then, because obviously you've talked a lot about personal injury, but why is personal injury one of the most important and perhaps overlooked segments of law? Yeah, so... It's one of the most important, number one, because of the sheer size. So by, you know, a lot of different estimates, personal injury accounts for 1% of gross domestic product in the United States, you know, in the, in the low hundred billions of dollars a year, you know, the potential between 100 and 125 billion. So it's, it affects a lot of people. Second, as I mentioned, most people can't afford a sudden unexpected accident to happen to them. And it is incumbent upon society to, to help them in those times. And a related point is the justice system today is ineffective in helping people get back to their, their pre-accident state. So again, it's millions of people are affected by car accidents, by construction accidents, and by other, those people are especially vulnerable. And third, the current system is inadequate to help them. And so I think those three reasons are why it is especially important and valuable to, uh, as a problem to work on. Absolutely. And again, give some really good practical examples there. So let's think about mistakes then. We talked about accidents. Let's talk about some of the common mistakes people make perhaps when choosing personal injury lawyers. You know, What advice would you give to people to perhaps avoid making those mistakes to ensure that they instruct the right ones? Yeah. So first and foremost, as a high level theoretical point, make sure your lawyer's incentives are aligned with the incentives that you have. And one of the things that I've started to do getting on and creating videos on YouTube and on TikTok even, my nine-year-old daughter, I was very impressed when she got back from sleepaway camp at my sudden TikTok prowess, uh, helping people actually answer that exact question, uh, which is what you should look for and what you should do. So what you should look for, first and foremost, is a lawyer who's transparent. Does the lawyer 
uh, actually have their, for example, rates on their website. Another way of looking at transparency is there's a common trick in personal injury where the lawyer will advertise these large numbers in order to entice clients that it almost feels like a lottery. Hey, we, we won clients $2 million. Wink, wink. We can do that for you too. And there's two problems with that. Number one, uh, only 0.001% of cases settle for $2 million. Uh, number two, the case that actually settled for $2 million, the client might have only gotten $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. The rest went to other people who did not even come close to that. So, so the, the client doesn't even come close to get, getting an amount. When you see lawyers that are trying to create these big numbers, almost like pornography, you should stay away from them because you, you know that that is the sort of tack that they take. So, so the, that's on the transparency side. On the actual number side, you should look at a lawyer that, for example, uh, decreases their fee as the settlement value goes up, since typically the amount of work that the lawyer does doesn't scale proportionally with uh, the a fee that they get from a larger case. Everybody should negotiate. Everybody should interview four or five different personal injury lawyers before they, they hire one. People should look and ask about the level and quality and depth of service. Is it just, are you helping me get a legal settlement? Or do you also help me file a property damage claim, get mental health support, seek financing at affordable rates? Because clients after accidents need far more than, than a legal settlement. They need a holistic support. Yeah, and again, such practical tips and advice. And thanks for, for sharing that. And I love that you also talked about sort of negotiating because, folks, the reality of life is you don't get what you deserve in this world, you get what you negotiate. So I think it's really important that you sort of highlight that. And so Mighty is a sort of all-in-one personal injury service for people uneasy about billboard lawyers, which you've referenced quite a lot. But people perhaps less familiar, what are billboard lawyers and why are people less trusting of them? Yeah, so, so billboard lawyers are... Uh, I, they are literally the the people on the billboards all across the United States. I know this phenomenon is not as prevalent in the UK, but if you go to any major American city and you look up, you will see billboards advertising personal injury lawyers. And the the caricature of billboard lawyers is meant to evoke the lawyers who do the bad practices that I just described, uh, trying to make large settlement sexy, misrepresenting their fee, for example, is free, which is something that a large a lawyer in, in the United States uh, has started a campaign on recently. Um, and they broadly uh, are, are people who uh, have like jingles and phone numbers that are 888, 888, 888. Um, and, they're, and they're almost, it's almost funny. And if it wasn't so sad, it would actually be funny, but there's a ridiculousness about it. They're, it's over the top. And more than anything, they don't actually serve the best interest of their clients because of the nature of their business and their structure. And so when we talk about billboard lawyers, what we're really talking about is a caricature that amalgamates all of the bad practices of different PI lawyers into, into one kind of uniform group. Yeah. And let's stick with this thing. So I know it's something you're, you're very passionate about in terms of sort of billboard lawyers being known for higher rates, outsourced services, overpromising, not, not disclosing, playing the game. And, you know, why is Mighty so passionate about challenging the billboard lawyers? So to understand that, you, I have to give you one piece of context of our background, which is for the past five years, before we launched the consumer service a couple months ago, those billboard lawyers were our software customers. And we had millions of cases on our platform. We had tens of thousands of personal injury lawyers. We saved those lawyers over $100 million in efficiency gains and staffing savings. And so we were able to see firsthand the bad behavior of them and the firms and the misaligned incentives between them and their clients. And most concretely, we saw that the $100 million that we saved them was just more profit in their own pockets as opposed to passed on to the clients themselves. So part of the reason we're so passionate about this is because we have a unique amount of information and context about these behaviors that no one else has. 
be just by the virtue of us being their, their service provider, them being our customers. And so the decision to compete with those customers was just based on us believing that we can serve the injured people in a way that was objectively better for them. And I think it's really important when there's an industry that helps the most vulnerable at its most vulnerable, but isn't actually living up to its societal promise, that there is somebody who calls that group out and holds them to account. And in the United States, that just doesn't exist. And so I sometimes am, I think, viewed as, a, as the bad guy. And I, I certainly don't ever mean to be mean-spirited. But I do think it is really important that there are groups or people that call out bad behavior that affect innocent people. And if that has to be me, uh, then so be it. No, and again, thank you for, for sharing your perspective on that and, you know, wanting to protect people and justice and, you know, people that perhaps are vulnerable having those 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 layers. I think it's really important that we, you know, with all of this, it's it's really putting the people who need the support first and get the service that they rightly deserve. And I guess let's go back to, to sort of Mighty then and, and the future and the plans. Obviously, you've had a very successful journey. You're obviously, you know, you are out there, you are competing, you are sort of, you know, people will be sort of, you know, forming opinions, but you're, you're kind of on your journey. So what does the expansion, what does the future look like for Mighty? Tell us more. Yeah, so we are uh, currently in three states. We're in Georgia, Connecticut, and Texas. Uh, but we will soon be expanding to all 50 with a new product that allows us to help more people faster. And so we're really excited about that. It's not something that, at least as of this airing, we've announced yet. But we're going to we're gonna do a few things. Number one, we want to help more people faster. Number two, we want to continue increasing the scope of our services in order to help people even more holistically. Um, and number three... And this is so antithetical to what exists in PI today. We want to continue putting pressure on ourselves to lower prices and to increase the quality of, of service because we know how important it is that technology and other progress actually results in the consumer getting better and better service and price. And in personal injury, that hasn't happened in decades. And so we really want to hold ourselves to account even though we're already far and away uh, objectively better than anything else that's out there. And it's, it's so lovely you say that because we talk a lot about sort of, you know, people say people before profits, but that just screams that to me that you're trying to put the consumer, you know, it's about the people, it's ensuring right, how can we get more efficient? How can we get better? How can we actually, you know, pass on a, a more even potentially even affordable, utilize these technologies, improve, expand, offer this to more people, help more people, I love it. It's just all about the people. Of course, you know, we're in for profit businesses, but it comes from a very good place based on good values. And you can't say too much, but if people want to keep up to date with Mighty and what's going on, which I'm sure our listeners will want to do and find out more about these expanding services, where can they find out more? So a lot of places these days, people can certainly go to our website, mighty.com. Uh, they can follow me on Twitter. I have a long name, but it's Joshua Schwadron, which is S-C-H-W-A-D-R-O-N. Uh, you can follow Mighty on Twitter. I have a TikTok channel where I'm posting at least a couple of times a week. There's a lot of different places where we are getting the word out. And I think for me, more than anything, we want to be a service that if sophisticated, smart people have friends or family who gets injured, they would say... Go to Mighty because Mighty will help you. And one of another example of something that we do that no no one else does um, is most personal injury law firms try and sign people as quickly as possible, yeah, uh, in order for them to you know get signed by the line. And at Mighty Law, any client that signed has sixty days to try out the service before the contingency fee uh, gets kind of locked in. And so there's just things like that that make us objectively better. So I would just say, if anyone knows of somebody that gets injured, you know, we would absolutely love them to recommend us uh, as a as a new uh, service that's, that's very different than anything that exists today. Absolutely. And you 100% are revolutionizing this space. We're going to share all these social media handles and web links with this episode for you as well. But Josh, it's been an 
absolute pleasure having you on the Legally Speaking podcast. Wishing you lots of continued success with your career and yourself and all the wider team at Mighty. But for now, from all of us on the show, over and out. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you like the content here, why not check out our world-leading content and collaboration hub, the Legally Speaking Club, over on Discord. Go to our website, www.legallyspeakingpodcast.com, for the link to join our community there. Over and out.